You ever wonder what the deal is with Batman and Christmas? And I mean, sure, just about any character that's been around as long as our Brucey boy has had a few Christmas specials along the way. But for some reason, Batman seems inexorably linked to the holiday. I mean, seeing the Dark Knight in the snow, always iconic. And I mean like, Batman Returns? Every nerd on Twitter's favorite Christmas movie. Mine's actually Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. But why? How did a character so steeped in trauma and darkness become so intrinsically linked with Christmas in our cultural consciousness? Let's dig into some baddie Christmas tales and see if we can't figure it out, shall we? I... I kind of hate Christmas. I've been trying to remember when that happened. As a kid, I feel like I loved Christmas, or at least parts of it, maybe, but in my adult life, November through December has become one big slog of blech. I start to dread it earlier and earlier, and even if I'm spending the day with someone I care a lot about and enjoy, there's still a piece of me that's just... I don't know how to put words to it, like a big black hole of, of sad. It didn't used to be this way, and I hate it. My partner loves Christmas, and I also, I really want to love Christmas. How did it get like this? How did I turn into someone more Grinch than Cindy Lou? When you first think about Batman and Christmas, there's two main pieces of media that likely come to mind, one of which being Batman Returns. This iconic 1992 entry in the Batman universe, directed by Tim Burton, was a pretty dark and macabre outing for The Dark Knight. Danny DeVito delivers a terrifying, grotesque performance as the Penguin, Michael Keaton has another stellar turn as Batman, and Michelle Pfeiffer's world-rocking performance as Catwoman is legendary. It's dark, violent, and brooding, but also takes place at peak Christmas season. Gotham is decorated with as much Christmas cheer as the dingy old city can muster. There's a giant Christmas tree, greedy corporate execs, and plenty of snow to set a dramatic backdrop for our hero to battle the forces of evil against. It's odd that a film that's so creepy and dark and oozing with Tim Burton's style has become such an iconic Christmas classic. Okay, I know that Nightmare Before Christmas exists. I, I was in a stage production of it once as Oogie Boogie, but that's different. That was specifically a Christmas film. But for some reason, something about it feels right. You know? Sure. There were some difficult Christmases when I was a kid, learning how to deal with the split household thing, Christmas morning with my mom being my favorite, and then dealing with a step family I didn't get along with for the second half. But I feel like I was still pretty stoked on Christmas back then. Maybe things just got harder as I got older. Bad stuff always seems to happen in the November through December range for me. Family members being sick or dying. Uh, there was the Black Friday where I got T-boned and almost died years later, and I still don't feel the same after that severe concussion. This year wasn't really any better. I've got medical bills piling up, dealing with scary health issues. My furnace broke and it took all of my savings. I'm not going to be able to buy my family presents. My partner broke her foot and is drowning in her own upsetting family stuff. And I'm desperate to put 2023 in the rearview mirror. But I still can't figure out when it started. When I try to think back, I remember a period of loving Christmas, and then all of a sudden the memories all turn bad. You could argue that Batman the Animated Series' Christmas with the Joker is an even more iconic Christmas outing for The Dark Knight. This is where we get to hear Mark Hamill voice the Joker for the first time. Hearing him sing the classic Jingle Bells, Batman Smells, Robin Laid an Egg refrain, which I always thought originated in this episode, but it turns out versions of the song go back way farther. This episode of the classic series is way more fun than Batman Returns. 
Joker escapes Arkham on Christmas Eve. We see Bruce and Dick in their holiday sweaters. There's action, laughs, capers galore, and it ends with the boys back at Wayne Manor watching a taped copy of It's a Wonderful Life, celebrating Christmas together in a few minutes of uncharacteristic peace. And it's so charming and definitely one of my favorite Christmas nostalgia pieces of media. It balances Batman's dark brooding with a lot of Christmas fun, and I like to return to it every year, even if just to watch a few clips from it. Christmas just makes me feel weird, I think. I don't know what it is, but when I go to a Christmas gathering or over to my family's house to celebrate the holiday, it's like I'm ambushed by a big dark cloud and my mood plummets dramatically and I have to pretend extra hard to be jolly. It even happened a few nights ago at a Christmas party with some of my favorite people on earth. Halfway through the white elephant, I just, I got so sad. And there's so many other awful feelings that I fixate on during the Christmas season. Battling jealousy and guilt is harder for me than ever this time of year. I get jealous of the stupidest things, which makes me feel guilty, and I already feel awful for not being able to get my loved ones better presents, and it's just a big spinning ball of my worst emotions. I mean, sure, seasonal depression isn't helping, but I swear, I used to love Christmas. Those, of course, aren't the only examples of Batman being entrenched in the Christmas season. There are tons, way more than we could ever deep dive into this year, from Arkham Origins taking place over Christmas Eve into Christmas morning, to Batman Noel, the original graphic novel written and illustrated by Lee Bermejo that riffs on a Christmas carol, to mountains of Christmas-related comic issues, to other Christmas episodes sprinkled throughout Batman's other animated outings. Heck, just this year, we got an amazing dedicated Batman Christmas movie for the whole family, and there's even a mini-series happening right now where Batman and Superman team up with Santa to fight some gnarly-looking bad guys. And I've been thinking about the question, you know, what's the deal with Batman and Christmas? Is it just because showing Batman against a light, snowy background looks extra cool and dramatic? Well, I'm, I'm sure that's part of it. It does look awesome. Gotham really pretties up when you add a lot of snow. But I think there's a bigger factor. Batman is a symbol of hope, of overcoming. His origins are steeped in pain and loss and fear, but he fought back against the darkness, becoming a force for good in Gotham. Batman's vengeance is balanced out by his compassion, by his hope. I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. I know a lot of the time we see Batman at his absolute worst. He is a violent and angry man a lot of the time, but at the end of the day, he's a man who fights through all of that so the citizens of Gotham and the people he's built a family around can see another Christmas. The best Batman Christmas stories highlight this side of the Dark Knight. They show his compassion in the face of adversity, his humor, the love he has for those he holds dear, his determination to fight back against the darkness and have a Merry Christmas. And you know what? Here's the thing I'm going to hold close to my heart. If Batman can get past all of the trauma, all of the anger, all of the worst things inside of him, if he can beat that, and help the world have a better Christmas. Then you know what? I think I might be able to find my way to loving Christmas again. Well, come what may. Merry Christmas, Mr. Wayne. Merry Christmas, Alvin. Goodwill toward men. And women. Patrons, I must thank you for all of your support. You have my deepest and most sincerest thanks. The fact that there are people out there who want to help me get to do this full time someday means the world to me 
And it's what keeps me going. When the editing gets tough. I hope you had a wonderful holiday. And I'm looking forward to making more stuff for you. And 2024. Dollar tacos. Thank you. My five dollar Phillips. Death's War Zone. Vesuvius. Tom. Thank you. And to the I love you friend level patrons. Meg. The Driss fam. I thank you. Gotham thanks you. I'll see you next year.